morning and welcome to the 107th commencement of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science. The commencement will begin with an introduction from the President and CEO of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science, Dr. Wendy Rowe. Hello, I'm Dr. Wendy Rowe, President and CEO of Rosalind Franklin University. Welcome to our 107th commencement ceremony. We gather today around a virtual stage to celebrate our graduates as they prepare to enter fields in need of their energy and expertise. For the second consecutive year, commencement arrives amid a pandemic that our nation and world is still struggling to bring under control. You, graduates, will have a hand in making that happen. RFU has prepared you for this challenge as you join teams that work across disciplines to defeat COVID-19 and advanced systems of care and biomedical research. Wherever your vocation takes you, the communities you serve will look to you for guidance. I encourage you to have faith in your abilities and to seize opportunities. RFU has provided you with the training you need to help lead our post-pandemic future, which demands health equity and improved wellness across all populations. On behalf of our entire university community, let me say how very proud I am of each and every one of you. Congratulations. Good morning, graduates. I am Dr. Nancy Parsley, Provost of Rosalind Franklin University. It is my great pleasure to welcome you, your families and friends, and our RFU community to this year's commencement. We wish you every success as you enter the professional lives you have worked so hard to attain. As I look back over events of the past year, I admire your strength and tenacity and the empathy you have shown each other and those in your care. Your resilience has been an inspiration. You also demonstrated how we must nurture the relationships that sustain us, especially in times of hardship and challenge. I invite you to stay connected to the classmates and mentors whose care and friendship help bring you to this moment. Never forget that Rosalind Franklin University and our network of more than 20,000 alumni stand behind you and believe in you. Again, congratulations on all that you have accomplished. I now have the pleasure of introducing our 2021 graduate speaker. We are proud to continue a tradition that incorporates an address by a current graduate. Please welcome Kenneth Furlow, a graduating student from the Chicago Medical School. When we started this healthcare journey, who knew that the culmination of our formal educational careers will be centered around the constant adaptation to change and a vision to see things through. For that, I say congratulations to the class of 2021. Committing oneself to a life centered around learning and placing another person's life at the forefront is no easy feat. In consideration of the comprehensive nature of our education at Rosalind Franklin University, I firmly believe that we are equipped, prepared, and ready for what is to come in the months ahead of us. We are entering a healthcare space where socioeconomic determinants negatively impact health outcomes and healthcare delivery models lack value. Despite these challenges, I firmly believe that our interprofessional education allows us to understand the multifaceted nature of healthcare delivery and consequently develop comprehensive strategies to improve outcomes and increase value. Remaining focused on our studies while adjusting to the constant changes of a world in a pandemic illustrates our resilience and purposeful perspective. This pandemic highlighted the inequities that exist in our communities and the need of healthcare teams that understood the importance for how a clinical evaluation and treatment plan must extend beyond the four walls of any clinical setting and into the communities where our patients predominantly reside. With respect to this reality, who else other then a graduate in class of 2021 is prepared to meet this challenge and raise the standard of care. Reflecting on the path that brought me here today, my journey in medicine started before I applied to any medical school. Before I started gathering patient histories in a short white coat, I was mentoring students at Chicago Public Schools 
and developing educational plans to improve their grades. Before I was handed the tin blade in the OR, I was a nine-year-old kid on the south side of Chicago, dissecting insects with a dull scalpel while using my front porch as an operating room table. Before establishing a nonprofit organization centered around financial literacy, career development, and wellness, I saw my community how social determinants impact the health outcomes and differences in life expectancy. And lastly, before being the first clinician in my family as an orthopedic surgeon, I was a student athlete at Georgetown University who persevered despite the challenges of balancing a pre-medical curriculum while trying to be the best football player I could become. Despite the differences in life experiences that we all have, each of our journeys leading to our graduation day is a product of challenges overcame and lessons learned. So as we continue to embark on this journey, despite the unforeseen challenges, through the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Regardless of what we will face in the days to come, we are fortunate to live in a period of history where change is commonplace and authenticity is respected. So therefore, what better a time to exist to become innovators and the builders of equity in order to promote a healthcare system built upon justice and helps people live fulfillingly. So those times when we doubt ourselves as young health professionals in a new environment, stay focused and take the first step. When we come across patients with complex social histories, approach them as a person with empathy and then take the first step. When we come across challenges in relation to clinical procedures and medical approaches, take the first step with the implementation of research and quality improvement projects. And lastly, when those moments arise, when life presents you with a heavy challenge to bear, reflect on what you have been through, and most importantly, who you are, and then take the first step. Because on that day with either a scalpel in your hand, a stethoscope in your ear, or a patient's chart in your computer screen, after taking one step after another in your personal journey, you would have eventually built upon flights of stairs that generations after you will learn from, build upon, and stand on. Therefore, whatever is to happen in our futures after this day, be comforted with knowing that with humility and commitment to excellence, our steps are the building blocks to make this world a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Kenneth. It is my privilege on behalf of Rosalind Franklin University to confer upon Dr. Ngozi Aziki an honorary degree in recognition of her distinguished career in medicine and public health system leadership. She's a board certified internist and pediatrician who has served at the helm of several health systems, including her current duties as director of the Illinois Department of Public Health. Dr. Aziki's guidance during the state's response to the COVID pandemic has demonstrated steadfast compassion and commitment to public well-being. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and by the State of Illinois, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. To the Chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Elizabeth Colson, to the esteemed Board, President Wendy Rowe, faculty, administrators, students, parents, and friends of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science, warmest greetings. And to the graduating class of 2021, for all the school and national exams you prepared for, the marathon study group sessions, the thousands of hours of lectures you sat through, through anatomy lab, clinical rotations, with such early morning rounding and pre-rounding that it was sometimes better not even to go to sleep for fear of not waking up on time. You did all that was asked of you and more so that you could arrive at this point. And I, although I've never had the pleasure of meeting any of you personally, I am blessed 
with the honor of being a part of today's ceremony. Though I wasn't physically with you over the last four years, trust me when I tell you I understand what you've been through and I fully acknowledge the extra challenges that this last year and a half have tendered. I humbly thank Chairman Colson and President Rowe for their gracious invitation to be a part of today's ceremony. Thank you, President Rowe, for your leadership and support of this institution and its students, and by extension, your stewardship of the integrity, professionalism, and ethical standards of my beloved profession. Being afforded this opportunity to speak before you is an honor, and I acknowledge that this opportunity was made possible because I serve as the captain of the amazing, incredible team at the Illinois Department of Public Health, a team that works tirelessly all the time, even before COVID year 2020, working to protect the people of Illinois and to support every Illinoisan in achieving his or her very best health. And yes, a global pandemic put what used to be lots of behind the scenes effort in full view for the entire state to behold. But in 2019 BC, before COVID, a newly elected politician, Governor J.B. Pritzker, an ardent champion for diversity, equity, and inclusion, gave me the greatest opportunity of my career in appointing me as the second woman ever and the first woman of color, the first black woman to ever hold the position of director of IDPH from over its 150 year history. In all honesty, it's been nerve wracking preparing to address you. It's totally different from COVID press conferences. So before I share the few nuggets I came up with, let me offer a few accolades to some other special groups outside of the graduates. To the administrators and faculty, congratulations on another successful year of staying true to the mission of Rosalind Franklin University, serving humanity through the interprofessional education of health and biomedical professionals, and guiding the discovery of knowledge dedicated to improving wellness, despite the social, political, and health upheaval we all bore witness to in the past year. Given the century plus history of this institution, the merging of colleges, advocating for diversity, equity, and inclusion in the development and training of healthcare professionals, the act of recognizing the contributions of a pioneering woman scientist forced to work in a time when she was barely valued and definitely not respected. By naming this institution in her honor and standing for what is right, even when it isn't popular, you have made the practice of following that arc of the moral universe that Dr. King spoke of, one of the trademark pillars of this institution. And not just this branch of the academy, but our state and our world are better places because of your stance. And to you, parents, congratulations. This moment is your reward for all the years and all the tears. For some of you, your graduate is following in your footsteps. For others, this is the first doctor ever in the family. Whatever the case is, I know how important family support has been in getting your graduate through to this end. So this is your moment too, and I salute you as well on this momentous achievement. And back to the stars of the day. Again, congratulations for achieving your dreams in the midst of a global pandemic. I applaud each of you for not losing sight of your goals despite the chaos and the uncertainty and the darkness we were all navigating in during this ongoing mass casualty traumatic event of the last 17 months. There is a popular declaration written by Brianne James. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. I cannot think of a better line to capture the spirit of this class, where more than a third are people of color and 56% are women. Hello, sisters. 
You are the embodiment of Rosalind's wildest dreams. I have so many things that I want to share, but the time is limited, so I wanted to focus on just a few things. I was going to start with, quote, there are no shortcuts to anywhere worth going. And I said, mm, delete that. Anyone pursuing the path of medicine is exactly the opposite of someone looking for a quick fix or a quick win or immediate gratification. So no, I think I want to share some lessons learned or rather highlighted during the two pandemics that exploded during your medical school tenure. The importance of communication. Communication is the exchange or imparting of information. Simple communication just means, here's something I wanna share, I'm giving it to you. But if you actually change it up and talk about effective communication, now we're talking about a whole new situation. Communication is to effective communication as a drone delivery of eggs from 30 feet in the air is to a driver delivering and handing the recipient at the door their carton of eggs. Effective communication ensures that what was intended to be shared was actually received as intended by engaging in a dialogue and real conversation and ensuring that the right message was conveyed. So just dropping a message versus ensuring that the message you dropped was in fact picked up is the difference between simply communicating and effectively communicating. I'd also like to touch on another important lesson and a part of a recent pandemic of sorts is confronting unconscious and implicit bias. I know some of you are saying, oh no, do we have to talk about racism? If you're tired of talking about racism, I invite you to think for a moment about how tired people who deal with racism and its effects every day. It's an ongoing pandemic that requires all of us to control and end it. So how can we be an anti-racist community? It starts with us all educating ourselves on the history of racism in this country. I encourage all of us to challenge notions that demote one race or culture under another. Let me share an encounter that I experienced when I was in med school some <coughs> 20 years ago. Uh, I was on a clinical rotation in my third year and there was a lecture series that occurred in the evening uh, with different uh, attending physicians. I remember signing out with my senior resident uh, and my intern and then proceeding to the conference room in the hospital where the lecture would occur. Being the kind of student that actually prefers to sit in the front, um, I took a seat in the front row uh, to, the, to the left, uh, to the right of center. And I, I sat there and people were coming into the conference room and waiting for the attending to show up. And he did, and he introduced himself, and then he launched into a, a case presentation uh, and said that he wanted everyone to actively participate. And so as they presented the case, they wanted the students to think about what additional history questions would you ask? You know, what uh, would you ask? What would you be looking for on the physical? You know, it delved into what the what's on the differential diagnosis, you, you know that drill. And so he went around the room asking every participant to uh, answer some of these questions. And so being in the front row, uh, I didn't think much of it when it started first with another person uh, more to the center, but then went around the entire room and actually we made it around the room again. And so I, I just continued to sit in my seat uh, absorbing, absorbing, you know, the facts of the case, but also thinking, why didn't I get to participate in this exercise? At the end of the lecture, I waited till all the other students had finished asking their questions, and I mustered up the courage to ask the professor 
why I was not called on to participate in the discussion. And he looked at me and said, I, I didn't realize you were one of the students. So I, I bring this up to just remind you that all of our actions have reactions that follow it. And there are consequences to the actions that we engage in. So I'm not trying to talk about victimhood, but I just address you with common sense to understand how implicit bias, unconscious bias, can very adversely affect our peers, our friends, our patients uh, in very significant ways. Finally, I encourage you to take care of yourself and bring your humanity to work. I have learned and am still learning that change, even in the midst of a crisis, can take a personal toll on you and that prioritizing time for self-care is as critical as prioritizing the issues and tasks in the moment. The intense pressure from all sides surpass anything that my team in public health has ever experienced. Across our field, across the nation, some people walked away from their roles, many were forced out of their roles, others doubled down and have been stretched more than the most elastic rubber band has ever been stretched. Some of us had the help and support needed to endure. Some of us needed professional help beyond that to get through. And then some of us, one of us, had an unscripted public cry in front of a row of live cameras, which ended up being broadcast over and over around the world. And at that time, it was not my proudest moment. In fact, it, I was horrified. But now, seven months later, it stands as that seminal moment that best defines just who I am. A caring mother, wife, daughter, physician, and leader. The lesson was and remains that we can bring our humanity to all the work we do. You don't have to check it in at the door. And so it may make things complicated, definitely more colorful and 100% authentic. That incident was pivotal for me. It made an impact on me as I found out that millions of other people wanted that humanity to be displayed. Your patients want to know that you're a real person and that you care and that you feel just like they do. Medicine will cause you to give of your physical time, but also pull on your heart. And showing empathy and care for your patients can and will take a toll. So you do have to take time to decompress, to recalibrate, and even reprioritize. Having exhausted your energies and reserves will leave you with very little to draw upon as you try to serve others. So find what restores you and make time, even as an overworked intern, make time to refill and refresh your cup. You have now earned yourself a position of great esteem and it's an incredible honor and a privilege and you need to guard it appropriately. So go forth, graduates of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science. You are our wildest dreams, and we are so proud of you. Be an effective communicator, show compassion, and educate yourself on the history of racism. Challenge internal and external notions that lessen people of certain races and cultures. Be curious, be a lifelong learner, be dedicated to improving wellness. And may every place you venture into find itself better off for your having been there. Congratulations, graduates. I wish you Godspeed on your journey. Thank you, Dr. Aziki, for your inspiring address 
and for all that you and the state have done to help us navigate this pandemic. We look forward to a brighter, healthier, and more equitable future. It is now my great honor and pleasure to begin the conferral of degrees for our candidates. With the approval of the Board of Trustees of Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science, and pursuant to the authority granted by the State of Illinois, I authorize the conferral of appropriate academic degrees upon the graduating class of 2021 for the School of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, the College of Health Professions, the Dr. William M. Scholl College of Podiatric Medicine, the Chicago Medical School, and the College of Pharmacy. President Rowe, faculty and honored guests and loved ones, I hereby announce the commencement of the Dr. William M. Show College of Podiatric Medicine. The students listed in the program for the degree of Doctor of Podiatric Medicine have satisfactorily fulfilled the requirements of the Dr. William M. Show College of Podiatric Medicine and have successfully completed their final examinations. Upon the recommendation of the graduate faculty, I present them for the degree of Doctor of Podiatric Medicine. On behalf of Dr. Rowe, the Board of Trustees, and by the State of Illinois, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Podiatric Medicine with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. I welcome you to the company of scholars. Graduates will be recognized by Dr. Leland Jaffe, Associate Professor, Department of Podiatric Medicine and Radiology. Dr. Elise L. Acciani. <laughs> Dr. Justin L. Adame. <laughs> Dr. Pawasha Ahmed. Dr. Uzair Amjad. <laughs> Dr. Fadi Zahi Akil. <laughs> Dr. Christopher L. Aquino. Dr. Amir M. Arif. Dr. Abbas Raif Baghdadi. Dr. Nicholas B.C. Dr. Taylor K. Bergstrom. Dr. Justin J. Bickler. Dr. Jenna E. Brettschneider. Dr. Kristen R. Canada. Dr. Marianne L. Carney. Dr. Victoria S. Carroll. Dr. Daniel V. Chu. Dr. Rebecca Zwick Co.
Dr. Armin S. Dodka. Dr. Kevin R. Diedrich. Dr. Matthew L. Diamond. Dr. Allison C. Fisher. Dr. Benjamin Fortson. Dr. Rory T. Gilhooly. Dr. Kyle Gleason. Dr. Huzefa Hader. Dr. Caitlin A. Hammock. Dr. Shurgil Hassan. Dr. Zoheib Hassan. Dr. Jessica L. Hofstadter. Dr. Ryan C. Hurley. Dr. Akshay Jane. Dr. Mona H. Kafil. Dr. Joy Davis Ganukadin. Dr. Marion Rose Cavanaugh. Dr. Spencer L. Keen. Dr. Bennett James King. Dr. Sharda Krishnapin. Dr. Mahek Lalani. Dr. Abad Majid. Dr. Shoaib Malik. Dr. Carolina Roxana Marquez. Dr. Anna Martin. Dr. Cameron Austin Meyer.
Dr. Walid Mirza. Dr. Callie Lorraine Juan Morlock. Dr. Yusuf Nafal. Dr. Daniel Narowitz. Dr. Aurora G. Oliva. Dr. Omari Owens. Dr. Janki A. Patel. Dr. Jonathan T. Prime. Dr. Miriam Qureshi. Dr. Sheriar Raja. Dr. Manuel Javier Ramirez. Dr. Riel Sacco. Dr. Rashid Shaw. Dr. Umbreen Naz Sharif. Dr. Yusha B. Siddiqui. Dr. Arashdeep Singh. Dr. Ravnik Singh. Dr. Chance Smith. Dr. Jennifer Mi Sang So. Dr. Katie Jeanette Springer. Dr. Akshita Shuram. Dr. Jacob A. Stricker. Dr. Fahad Fahir. Dr. David Tom. Dr. Andrew William Terigian. Dr. Ahant Vedantham.
Dr. Alana G. Wall. Dr. Rachel Michelle Warner. Dr. Sam Joseph Weir. Dr. Megan Cecilia Wood. Dr. Chalen Yang. Dr. Huaitao Zhang. Clinical graduates of the Dr. William M. Show College of Podiatric Medicine will now recite the Oath of Geneva with their interprofessional colleagues from Rosslyn Franklin University. As a member of a healthcare profession, as a member of a healthcare profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit considerations of age, disease, or disability. I will not permit considerations of age, disease, or disability. Creed, ethnic origin, gender, or gender identity. Creed, ethnic origin. Gender or gender identity. Nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation. Nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation. Socioeconomic status or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will respect the secrets that are confided to me, even after the patient has died. I will respect the secrets that are confided to me, even after the patient has died. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity, and in accordance with good practice. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity, and in accordance with good practice. I will foster the honor and noble traditions of my profession. I will give my teachers, colleagues, and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will share my knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of health care. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will not use my knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I will not use my knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. The trustees and the faculty of Rosslyn Franklin University of Medicine and Science and all of our graduates join me in honoring their families and friends here today.
While you no doubt feel great pride for all that your loved ones have accomplished, please do take a moment to acknowledge your own success for the role you played in helping them to realize their goals, for the personal sacrifices you made along the way and the support you have given. We thank you and honor you with our applause. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce the awards for the Dr. William M. Shaw College of Podiatric Medicine. Announcing the awards is Dr. Karana Mason, Vice Dean of the Dr. William M. Shaw College of Podiatric Medicine. The Edwin J. Harris DPM Proficiency in Pediatric Orthopedics Award is given to a graduating student who exhibits high standards of professional conduct and academic achievement in pediatric orthopedics, Katie Springer. The American College of Podiatric Medicine presents the Timothy Holbrook Memorial Award of Excellence to a student chosen for academic and clinical excellence in orthopedics and medicine. The recipient of the award this year is Katie Springer. The Proficiency in Podiatric Medicine Award is given to the member of the graduating class whose performance in podiatric medicine was the most outstanding and who has demonstrated mastery in the field. This year, the recipient is Akshita Sriram. The Proficiency in Scholarship Award is given to the graduating student with the second highest academic average throughout the four years of the program. This year, the recipient is Bennett King. The Proficiency in Podiatric Surgery Award is given to the graduating student with the highest academic performance in podiatric surgery courses, demonstrated knowledge of podiatric surgery, participation in the department's educational activities, and overall professional demeanor. This year, the recipient is Bennett King. The Jerry D. Brandt Leadership Award is given in recognition of outstanding leadership and contribution to the graduating class. The recipient of this year's award is Jennifer So. The award for highest proficiency in scholarship is given to the graduating student with the highest academic average. This year's recipient is Daniel V. Chu. The Proficiency in Biomechanics and Orthopedic Diseases Award is given to the graduating student who demonstrates mastery in these fields. This year, the recipient is Daniel V. Chu. The Dr. William M. Show College of Podiatric Medicine Centennial IPMSA Leadership Award was established by the Illinois Podiatric Medical Students Association to recognize two graduating students from the college for their leadership on the Executive Council of the IPMSA. The recipients of this year's awards are Akshay Jane and Abreem Nas Sharif. The Student Mentor and Educator Award recognizes a graduating student who has excelled in mentoring and assisting other students of the Dr. William M. Show College of Podiatric Medicine. The recipient of this year's award is Rebecca Zwick Coe. The Philip J. Deere Fortune Service Award is awarded to a graduating student who has provided exemplary service to the college, supporting a variety of activities and efforts of the college. The recipient of this year's award is Jonky A. Patel. The Robert L. Barron DPM Proficiency in Podiatric Radiology Award is given to the graduate whose performance in podiatric radiology is outstanding and who has demonstrated mastery in the field. This award is named after the long-standing former chair of the Department of Radiology and 1981 graduate of the Dr. William M. Scholl College of Podiatric Medicine. This year, the recipient is David Tom. The Stephen M. Geller DPM Graduate Merit Award is given to a student who exhibits high standard of professional conduct, academic achievement, ethics, and exhibits aptitude in podiatric medicine and podiatric orthopedics, which includes, but is not limited to, dermatology, biomechanics, sports medicine, and infectious disease. We are pleased to announce 
that the recipient for this award is Megan C. Wood. I would like now to recognize the members of the Shoal College of Podiatric Medicine Class of 2021 Pi Delta Honor Society members who are listed in the program. Congratulations. Members of the Class of 2021, we are here today celebrating not just what you accomplished at Show College, but all the hard work that led you to this point. You and your families and friends are justifiably proud of your many accomplishments that enabled you to successfully complete your studies in podiatric medicine and be officially called doctors from this day on. Your years at Show have been a labor of love, a journey of discovery, and sometimes late into the night, whether studying for an exam or assisting with that emergency surgery at the hospital, an act of sheer determination and will. You came to Show College to study, learn, and grow. You made lasting friendships with your classmates. Sure, there were times of anxiety and stress, but many other memorable times of togetherness and laughter. Through it all, our faculty, staff, and administration were deeply committed to helping you become excellent podiatric physicians capable of meeting today and tomorrow's critical challenges. You couldn't have selected the career you did and accomplished all that you have without profound passion. You were drawn to podiatric medicine, drawn to show college, I'm sure, by a calling to help others, a higher purpose. I know this because I read all of your personal statements. I also need to take a few minutes to commend you on your resilience, especially in the face of uncertainty brought about by the global crisis. The past 16 months have been challenging to say the least with all the changes to clinical rotations and worrying about your personal safety, yet you all excelled, successfully matching with residencies all over the country. Being resilient is a great character to have as life throws many curveballs. Having an idea of what you want and how to get there is essential, but knowing how to adapt and embrace potential changes to your plan as you have all demonstrated is just as crucial. This speaks volumes about your passion, dedication, and commitment to your fellow human beings. We all know there is no guarantee that your life's journey from this day on will be a straight line. But based on what I've seen with your class, you are unstoppable and will go on to make great impact in the lives of your future patients and in podiatric medicine. In closing, I would like to leave each of you with the hope that as you follow your path over time, you will be able to balance your drive for achievements, dedication to patient care with a commitment to love and to play, to family and friends, to your community and to the nation. Class of 2021, I offer my sincerest congratulations. May all of you fare well on the journey ahead. Members of the audience, please join me in congratulating our graduates who have been remarkable throughout the pandemic on this day that means so much to them and to their families and loved ones. It was always for you, mom. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everyone who was here, who has helped me through these four years. It was always for you, mom. Thank you. All right. Uh, I just want to thank Daisy and my parents for all the support that you have given me throughout these four years of podiatry school. And I love you so much and I wish you all were here with me today. Thank you so much to my family and friends, particularly my mother, um, for all of your support throughout the four years that have gone by. And Grandma, this is for you. I'd like to thank my friends, family, and my boyfriend, and all of the friends that I met here along the way, just for all of your support um, throughout this whole journey. Um, so first and foremost, I'd like to thank God for bringing me here. And then I'd like to thank my family, my parents, Ami and Abu, my siblings, Hamza and Zoya, uh, my beautiful wife, Anbreen, um, and then also my in-laws, the Busher family. Um, I wouldn't be here without your love and support, so thank you guys. I'd like to just thank my family and my friends. Unfortunately, couldn't be here today, but congratulations to all my friends and colleagues that have made it this far, and thank you for everyone's support along the way. 
I'd like to thank my family, my friends, and my colleagues, and congratulations to everyone uh, graduating today. Uh, I just want to say thank you to my family, friends, and all my classmates. Congratulations to Class 2021. We made it. I'd like to thank my parents, my grandparents, my siblings, and all my friends. Love you guys. Thank you to all my friends and family, uh, professors who's gotten me here. Um, congr congratulations to the Class of 2021. Congratulations, Class of 2021. We did it. Thank you so much, Mom, Dad, and Shadon, for all the unconditional love and support over the past several years. I wouldn't be here without it. I love you guys so much. Uh, I want to say thank you so much to my parents for all their support, my younger brother, and all of my friends. Thank you. I wouldn't have made it without you all. A huge shout out to my parents and a special shout out to my wife, Athia Khan, for all her support. I want to give a shout out to my parents and my wife for the continuous support and love and guidance. I wouldn't have made it this far without you guys. Thank you. Gracias a Dios, a mi mamá, mi familia y mi amistades uh, por su apoyo y su amor. Todo lo puedo en Cristo que me fortalece. Filipenses 413. Just want to give a huge shout out to my parents, my wife, my daughters, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my brother. Couldn't have done this without you. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to give a big shout out to my parents and my brother um, for all the continuous support and always listening to me, especially when the times are hard. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you. I want to start off by giving a shout out to God, my Lord and Savior. Uh, and I also want to shout out my parents, the Owens family, the Burton family, the Allen family. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you to my parents, my sister, my baz and dadas, and whole family and friends for loving me and supporting me throughout my journey. First, Alhamdulillah, I would like to thank my father, Akhtar Kamal Qureshi, my mother, Yasmin Qureshi, and my two sisters, Sarah Qureshi and Rabia Qureshi. I just want to thank my friends and family. Couldn't have done it without you guys. Thank you for your love and support. Appreciate it. I'd like to dedicate this degree to my parents and my grandparents, especially my grandfather that just passed away. I couldn't be where I am today without the help of all of you guys. I love you all and I love my siblings and everybody else who helped in bringing me here today. So thank you so much. Uh, hey, my dad, thank you for everything you guys have done for me over the past few years. Couldn't have done this without you. Jay, babe, and uh, all Pod Squad. Congrats, guys, we did it. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for all of the years of um, support and congratulations to the class of 2021. I'd like to say thank you to my mom, dad, friends, and my two cats, Milo and Cora. Love you guys. All right, I want to thank Olaf Hanwatala. I want to take, thank my parents, my family, and my wife. I'd like to say thank you to my mom, dad, sister, Brandon, and my niece, Scarlett, and my grandfather, Poppy. Thank you for everything. Uh, thank you, mom and dad, uh, Nick, Chris, Lauren, Alex, uh, the rest of the family, aunts, uncles, my dog, Otto, and lastly, my soon-to-be wife, Jessica. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys all. Thanks. Thank you so much to all my family that have got me to this point, especially mom, dad, Marcy, Mallory, Mimi. I really appreciate everyone.